great strength rings the bell. Or does it in these days of mechanization? How much do muscle and brawn still count in Britain today? The smith, the mighty man, is he. But horses, as a means of transport, are on the way out. And you don't often find a farrier in town these days. Here's a job that takes muscles. Some people, caught in a traffic jam, might wish they could do this to the car in front. But to these chaps, it's just work. In fact, it takes more brawn to break things than to make them. There are often mechanical aids, like this crude-looking lump, in the demolition business. But for most of the work, there seems to be no substitute for the old-time pick. Some people may think the licensed fiddling trade is a life of ease, but there's a lot of hard work behind it. Some barrels of beer weigh over 400 weight. Each of these draymen manhandles more than three tons in a day's work. And he uses his elbow muscles as well. The army seems to have dropped the emphasis on brawn, certainly as far as size is concerned. The minimum height for infantry is an inch less than in 1914. It's now five foot two inches. In the First World War, a soldier's equipment weighed 90 pounds, not including the greatcoat, and in those days, they foot-slogged it. Today, troops carry anything from 50 to 80 pounds, but transport is more often on wheels. One part of the army that hasn't shrunk is the Queen's Company of the Grenadier Guards. They still insist on a height of at least six foot two. They may seem to have an easier time, but today's soldiers certainly aren't soft. At the Army School of Physical Training, they learn tactics that should see them through any little difference of opinion they may meet. Unarmed combat is not, of course, just a matter of brawn. Science comes into it as well. One can't help wondering why they didn't do it all by explosives in the first place. Mat men, that's what they call professional wrestlers in the business, need muscles. And they have to keep in pretty good trim. Kurt Stein, a German heavyweight, has a medical checkup before he goes into the ring in London to fight before a crowd of 6,000. His opponent, Tibor Zakars, has a toning up treatment. He comes from Hungary. Believe it or not, the sport does have some rules. Eye gouging is forbidden, and you're not allowed to break limbs, although it happens by accident from time to time. This new code of conduct in the ring cleaned up the old all-in wrestling of the 30s with its doubtful promotions and callous disregard for the wrestlers. <laughs> Wrestling used to be a strictly cap and muffler affair. Nowadays, you get quite a different crowd, and many of the fans are women. Perhaps some of them like to imagine it's their old man who's taking a pasting in the ring. The wrestling rings are successors to the arenas of ancient Rome. The writhing, grunting mat men who may sweat their way through five or six contests a week 
are the modern gladiators. Whatever else they may have, it certainly takes muscle to pick up a 17 stone man as if he was a sack of flour. In the docks, handling is being mechanized. But don't imagine you can be a docker if you're a weakling. There are still the odd bits of lifting to be done. The same applies to the mines. They're far more mechanized than they used to be, but a miner may shovel five to seven tons of coal a day. If you really want to see muscles, go to the bodybuilding boys. At clubs like this throughout the country, members do weightlifting either as an athletic pursuit or just to build themselves a fine physique. Some of them are office workers who find it improves their fitness and stops them getting flabby. They learn to lift weights of 300 pounds and upwards in very uncomfortable positions and hope to attain the body of a Tarzan. One and a half hours, three times a week is the prescribed dose. And it's said that a vast physical improvement will be noticeable after a fortnight. Some of them may do it to cut a dash with the girls, but it can't leave much time for taking them out. So the girls come and sit in on the training sessions. Some muscle men don't overstrain themselves by walking to the gym. And if there's any really hard work to be done, they use their brains and leave it to the stronger sex. 